All right, now we're going to do something new where we're going to solve some absolute value equations. Uh, very similar to solving linear equations, um, but there's a, obviously a little bit of a difference with absolute value. Um, and it has to do with uh, the whole positive negative thing. So let's start by talking about what absolute value is. Okay, so you've probably been exposed to this before, hopefully a little bit. Um, but just to make sure we understand, absolute value is the distance from zero. All right, and technically it doesn't have to be zero, it's just wherever the center point is located. But for our purposes, zero is gonna be what we're talking about most of the time. All right, so if I say the absolute value of x equals three, that means that the distance from zero is three units. Okay, so if I'm on a number line and I'm standing at zero, okay, three units away from zero is one, two, three. So this is um, an answer to this problem. What value of x is the absolute value equal to three? Three. But that's not the only answer. So if this is a linear problem, the answer would be 3, and we'd be done. But since it's an absolute value problem, there's another answer. Okay, standing back at 0, there's another direction I could have gone. It's still 3 units away, it's just in the opposite direction. 1, 2, 3. All right, and that number is negative 3, and that's also an answer. So if I, if I were to give you this problem, it'd be super easy, but you would have two answers. X equals negative 3 or positive 3. All right, so that's where the little bit of a difference comes in. We're going to have two answers to every problem. Okay, now when you're evaluating an absolute value, in practice, all it does is make the answer positive. So, for instance, if I plugged in negative 3 up here, and I said the absolute value of negative 3 equals 3. See how it turned that negative 3 into a positive 3? All right, but the absolute value of positive 3 is also positive 3. So it doesn't switch the sign, it just makes anything that was negative, positive. All positives stay positive. So if I say evaluate the absolute value of two, you would say that equals two. All right, if I said absolute value of negative five, you would say that equals positive five. All right, uh, if I give you 8.4 minus the absolute value of two n plus five, a little more complicated, but I tell you n is equal to negative 7.5, so you're gonna plug that in there. So this is 8.4 minus 2 times 7.5 plus 5 inside the absolute value. All right, so 2 times 7.5, that's 15, plus 5, uh, that's 20. And after we take the absolute value of 20, it's still 20. So this ends up being 8.4 minus 20 which is negative 11.6. All right, so you can get negative answers on some of these problems once the absolute value is gone. All right, if it ends up being a subtraction like this, then yeah, we're gonna get a negative answer even though we're dealing with absolute value. So just uh, keep your head on straight and just make sure anything inside the absolute value will become positive when it, be, when it goes outside the absolute value. All right, so let's solve a couple of equations. On the right side here, I have, uh, it's a three-step process. Um, obviously, within each step, there are some variations that you're going to run into, but that's why we practice this. So I want to keep the steps as simple to follow as possible. And these are, this is about as simple as it gets. So your number one step, you have to isolate the absolute value. That means get it by itself. So the absolute value of y plus 6, we need to isolate it. So that means this 3 on the outside is um, has to go away. All right, now, here's a pro tip for this. Never distribute. You are not allowed to distribute into an absolute value. They're not parentheses, it's not the same thing. Okay, so never distribute into an absolute value. Instead, since it's three being multiplied by the absolute value, we can divide by three on both sides to get rid of it. So that'll leave me with the absolute value of y plus 6 equals 2. All right, step number two, break it into positive and negative versions of the equation. So this is the different part from just a regular linear equation. 
we're going to split this up into two separate equations. On one side, it's going to be y plus 6 equals 2. That's the positive version. On the other side, it's going to be y plus 6 equals negative 2. That's the negative version. Notice the plus 6 did not change signs. It's plus 6 on both problems. The only thing that changes signs is what it's equal to, positive 2 and negative 2. All right, so that leaves us with one last step and solve for the variable. All right, this may be one step, multi steps, it just kind of depends on the problem given to you. So this one's y equals negative 4, and this one over here is y equals negative 8. All right, circle both of those. All right, if you want to be safe, you can plug them back into the original problem, make sure they work. Negative 4 plus 6, that's 2. And absolute value of 2 is 2. 3 times 2 is 6. All right, negative 8 plus 6, that's negative 2. But the absolute value of negative 2 is positive 2. 3 times 2 is 6. So they do both, in fact, work. All right, y'all give this next one a try. Then unpause it when you're done. See if you got it right. All right, so I'm going to isolate the absolute value. This one's a little different than the last one. last one was multiplied in between here. This is being added. Okay, so to get rid of this 2, we just need to subtract 2 to cancel it out. So subtract 2 over here. So absolute value of 2c minus 1 equals 4. All right, split it up into positive and negative versions. So I have 2c minus 1 equals 4, and 2c minus 1 equals negative 4. Solve for the variable. So this one's going to take a couple steps. We've got to add 1 first, and then divide by 2. So I have c equals 5 halves. Add 1 over here. And c equals negative 3 halves. All right, again, we can plug them in and make sure they work. So if I plug in 5 halves, if you multiply 5 halves times 2, you get 5. 5 minus 1 is 4. Absolute value of 4 is 4. 2 plus 4 is 6. Negative 3 halves. If you multiply that by 2, you get negative 3. Minus 1 is negative 4. Absolute value of that is positive 4. 2 plus 4 is 6. So they do, in fact, work. Okay, um, I didn't write check because it's not always necessary. If, if, a, if a problem, if an answer is not going to work, you're probably going to know it before you get to the end. Um, but it is always a good idea. Um, if you have time, plug them back in. Just make sure they work. No reason to take any chances that you made a careless error somewhere. All right, let's try a word problem. These are pretty tricky to set up. Okay, so I want to make sure to go over one of these with you. This is uh, just straight out of one of the book problems, so you'll have a couple more assigned as part of your uh, problem set. U.S. Mint produces quarters that weigh about 5.67 grams each. After the quarters are produced, a machine weighs them. If a quarter weighs 0.02 grams more or less than the desired weight, the quarter is rejected. We want to write and solve an equation to find the heaviest and lightest quarters the machine will approve. All right, so we're going to have an absolute value because we have a plus and minus situation. And we're going to have an x. Uh, let's use a w. We'll use w for weight. Let's write that down over here. Um, it's going to be something in there next to it, and it's going to be equal to something over here. And those somethings are going to be this 5.7 and the 0.02. All right, and the tricky part about this is people always mix it up. They put the wrong number in the wrong spot. All right, so you want to think about which one is going to be plus or minus. All right, and that's the one you want outside the absolute value. That's the one we want over here. Because whenever we split the equation up, that's the one that we do a positive version and a negative version. Okay, so go through here, and which one is the one that's plus or minus? All right, after the quarter, machine weighs them. If quarter weighs 0 0.02 grams more or less, plus or minus. So we want the 0 0.02 outside the absolute value right here. So that means we want the point, uh, five, six, seven. 5.67, I mean, inside the absolute value with the W. So once we weigh the quarter, plus 5.67, and then we'll go 0 0.02 
above or below that. Okay, so that'll give us the heaviest and the lightest quarters that we could have. All right, so let's solve this out. So right, so that's our right part. Let's solve it. Um, so we don't have to isolate. There's nothing else outside. So let's split this up. All right, let me make one correction here. Um, this should be a minus 5.67 because we're going to take our weight and we're going to subtract what they normally weigh and then that'll tell us if it's going to be above or below that weight. So W minus 5.67 instead of plus. All right, and then over here, W minus 5.67, and this side's going to be equal to negative 0.02. All right, so it's just a one-step problem. Add 5.67 to both sides. W equals 5.69. And over here, we're going to add 5.67 to both sides. And we get W equals 5.65. All right, and that's the heaviest and the lightest. These are in grams, so make sure to put your units. The heaviest and the lightest that a quarter can be and not be rejected. Okay, now it is kind of hard to set this up. Like I said, people mix up the 5.67 and the 0.02. Um, even me, I've messed up the, the sign in the middle there. So if I had left that as a plus sign, we would have gotten negative 5.65 and negative 5.69. Think about that. Didn't make sense in the problem. You can't have a negative weighted quarter. Okay, so I realized that as I was kind of thinking as we were writing it out. I'm like, oh, that's not going to work. So realize those things and you can make corrections on yourself. All right, you can do what I did. I realized I needed that to be a minus, so we go back, change it to a minus, and keep going. It doesn't mess us all up. All right, and if you make the more common error where you switch the 0.02 and the 5.67, okay, we would have had W minus 0.02 equals 5.67, and W minus 0.02 equals negative 5.67. So we would have gotten 5.69 still as one of our answers, but the other one would have been negative 5.65 instead of positive and that's where you can see that doesn't make sense in the problem so use your use your uh, common sense especially on these word problems make sure your answers make sense in the context of the, the problem given to you